I'm not a good programmer. I'm pretty new to the language C++. Don't expect me to understand fully what is happening here, but I'm just trying to explain it to you guys. So I'm trying to show you the most important parts of a coin. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel. Today I don't feel like doing a tutorial. It's been a while that we've done a tutorial. It's been a while that I've uploaded a video anyway. The reason why I didn't upload any video in the last couple of weeks was because I was busy trying to understand the code behind Bitcoin because some people have some questions about it and I would like to answer it. I would like to understand the blockchain technology but I can't explain it if I don't know it myself. So I took a lot of time trying to to figure it all out. I think that today we're gonna check out the source code. Look and try and understand the source code of Bitcoin. And maybe we're gonna check some other coins as well, just to compare. Let me first start up Linux. I've collected a couple of coins. If you want these coins yourself, you can find them on GitHub. GitHub is a place where you can do open source projects. So let's go to GitHub and let's just check it out. So let's imagine you wanna check out the Bitcoin source code. So you just go to github.com slash Bitcoin. Here you can find the latest version of the Bitcoin Core Wallet. If you check here at releases, there are lots of releases, you can download the source code. You see here, source code, source code. I took it upon myself to download a lot of source codes. As you see here, a lot of Bitcoin source codes. This is Bitcoin Cash. What else do we have? Doggy coin. Uh, that's a Dutch coin, it doesn't matter. Litecoins. Yeah, and the original Bitcoin. I thought it would be cool to open the original Bitcoin, just to check it out, you know? So let me just copy to my background, extract it. So let's check this project. So let's check out the source code. This is Bitcoin 1, well, 0 0.1, the first version of Bitcoin. Where to go, where to go? Let me check out. Let's start by the main, because C++ starts with main. Okay, so what do we have here? Let me just put it there. It starts with a hash genesis block. What is the hash genesis block? The hash genesis block is the first block that was ever made in the blockchain. So it starts with the genesis, you know, like the, the story of the genesis. So it's the name of the first block. And the first block has a hash and this is that hash. So let me just scroll down. Where, where are you? Here. This is the blockchain basics. So here is the information about the blockchain. The first block was this Genesis block. So a block in the blockchain always looks something like this. So we have the get hash, that's the first hash or the last hash. So in, in this situation, it is the first hash. And normally when there is a new block entering, so below this block would be a new block and it would have the get hash of the last block. It starts with a hash Merkle root and that's the code, that's the hash that identifies the entire blockchain. What else do we have in here? There is a block epoch time. So this time is, I think, the amount of seconds that has been last since January 1st, 1970. I don't know for sure, but I think it's like that. We have a nonce and a nonce is a random code in the blockchain. Every time they use a nonce and they need a bigger nonce than the last nonce. So you are probably all wondering, how does it work? So it starts here. We have here a 50 times a coin. What would be the coin? The coin is not identified here. And I think the coin was found. Header? Yeah. So in the main header, uh, he identified a coin would be this amount of, well, coin. The idea of one Bitcoin, and you probably already know it, is that one Bitcoin is filled with, with 100 million coins. Whenever you see the word coin in the script, that means a hundred million. So let's go back to the main. So what it says here is that when this block was mined, it had a reward of 50 bitcoins. Find the get a block value. So every time a block is mined and a block, it is a package of a lot of transactions. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go to blockchain.info. And as you see here, these are the latest blocks. We have already 500,000 different blocks. And within this one block are 2007 transactions. These blocks have a lot of transactions in it. So it's not one transaction per block. And these blocks are supposed to be mined by miners. And whenever the miners get a block, they get a reward. And that reward is here. So you see the block value, you get a subsidy of 50 times the coins. But as you see here, the subsidy is cut in half every four years. What is this? N best height? That means the height of the block. So let me show you. So we're now at height 500,000. Here would be at this moment number 508,000 block. What this means, that the height of the block now divided 
by 210,000. It's two times possible, because 210 fits two times in 508. Uh, and a little bit more, but since it is a integer here, integers do not have uh, dots. So it's not possible to have an integer that is like 1.5. So integers are whole numbers. It could be either one, two, three, four, whole numbers. There's no dot, you cannot divide it. There's no a half. If you divide this by that, then it fits two times. So what it says here is divide the coin reward two times by two. So that means that nowadays, if you mine a block, you would get 12 and a half coins because 50 divided by two is 25 and 25 divided by two is 12 and a half. That's an interesting part, the blocks. So what else do we have here? Target spacing. The target spacing means that the script is built upon trying to find blocks every, well, whatever you fit in here. They said here 10 times 60 seconds. So 10 times 60 seconds is 10 minutes. It tries to mine a block every 10 minutes. They didn't know it back then that it was so important to make it faster. So the newer coins all have different target spacing times, a faster target spacing time. Back to this part, the block part. It is important for the Bitcoin wallet that every other wallet that it is connecting to has exactly the same information here. This should always be the same. If there is a small change here, it doesn't matter if you just change one of these numbers somewhere, then the script won't work. Then you cannot connect well, the different wallet with the original wallets. Even though you have everything the same, you still cannot connect it. What does a miner do? In the old Bitcoin wallets, the miners were internal. And the reason why they had internal miners was that back in the days, you were able to mine with your wallet. Just one computer could find blocks very easy. But nowadays, it is very hard to collect any block and you need a supercomputer or a combined power of a lot of computers and they call that a mining pool. So that would have been the original Bitcoin. Let me just check other coins as well. Yeah, let's check the Litecoin. This is a Litecoin wallet from, I think it was the year 2012 or 13, I'm not sure. And let's check that out. So as you see here, it is a lot bigger with a lot more files. It grew over time. Let's just compare the main. Okay, so let's go back to the Genesis block idea of Bitcoin and let's compare it with the Genesis block of the Litecoin. So Litecoin, source, oh, here is main. Let's just put them next to each other. So this is original Bitcoin, this is Litecoin. Let me search for that Genesis block. So as you see, these coins look a lot like each other. The code is mainly copied, changed and updated. But because whenever you make an update in Bitcoin and you try to check it out, you won't be able to connect with the older versions of Bitcoin. So that's the main idea and the main problem that you have with updating the coins. That's why they have a lot of different coins because whenever a developer is busy with these coins, they have to make their own coin because it's not possible for them to update, for instance, a Litecoin wallet and check out what's going to happen on the net because it won't connect with the rest. So you are being forced to change all the information within this Genesis block. This, As you see, Bitcoin has a very nice timestamp. It says the time January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. This guy was really, Satoshi Nakamoto was really anti-banks and he believed that there was supposed to be a different system of creating money. There are some minor updates with coins. Most of the coins, as you see, the script is almost the same. I thought it was very important for me to understand how this blockchain idea works. I figured out that all the blockchains look a lot alike. I'm not sure if all the blockchains, but a lot of them. Because if I would, for instance, grab a doggy coin, doggy coin, extract here, source, main, Oh, it's not in the main here. Oh yeah, they created the chain parents. So nowadays it's all written down in this file, the chain parents. So here is all the information of that doggy coin. These are all hexadecimal IP addresses of known nodes, as they call it. And a node is a wallet, for instance, that is connected to other wallets. So as you see, there are a lot of nodes already pre-programmed within the wallet itself. So this was the doggy coin. And as you see here, we see another replica. It's not exactly the same, but we have a lot of things in common. Here we have the timestamp. In doggy coin, the timestamp is Nintendo. We have a Genesis time. And 
here they call it block end time. So you see there are some minor, minor changes, but it looks a lot the same. In order for me to fully understand what's actually going on with a blockchain, I had to create my own coin. What I wanted to show you was the idea that we have here. So let's go to the source chain parents and CPP. I've created a blockchain as well. Within this blockchain, as you see, I only have three seeds. And this is my computer, a computer of a family member and a computer of a friend. And I've created my own alert key, a hash genesis block. So as you see here, this is the genesis block. So what's gonna happen when the computer is mining? If we check this debug log, we're gonna see the blockchain in action. So this is what a blockchain actually is. It is a chain of blocks. Within these blocks are transactions, but in this case, I didn't do any transactions. First, it checks the best chain. So the best chain would be the blockchain that is the longest. And in this situation, there wasn't a blockchain yet. So the best chain, it will just be the Genesis block. This Genesis block here, it starts with this Genesis hash. The hash best chain is the same as this hash here, the first block of this blockchain. What it tries to do is create a hash of the previous hash, which has zeros before a normal hash. When you have a random hash, you have 64 random numbers and letters in a arbitrary placement. The chances of finding a hash is very small so the computer tries a lot of different hashes and it does that by using the hash Merkle root the previous block was the Genesis block that was this hash and it searches for the right hash what else can I show you guys well, we can create the wallet, that will be fun. But let me just show you how to do it with, for instance, a Litecoin wallet. So we have Litecoin here. We're gonna create a wallet from this source because we cannot run this source right now. So what we do is we open a terminal. We start by, let me think, let me think. Isn't it QMake? Yeah, so we're gonna make a wallet. Wow, this one was very easy. So what is happening right now in the screen? The computer is compiling all the C++ files into a executable file. While it does that, it is checking the code for irregularities, errors. Because we know for sure that this wallet is working because it has been tested and the Litecoin wallet just works. It was very easy to start making it. And this takes a while, it depends on your computer. The faster your computer, the faster, of course, this compiling is. As you see here, there are all small CPP files. So these are the files that we were just checking. Oh, there is a standard error in the Litecoin. Let me first quickly fix it. So we were building this one and I already know this error. It is here uh, in the file RPC raw transaction. So transaction. I had to find, where was it? Line number 242. So we're at, ah, it's this one. Here it says that there is a constant called C script ID and that is already defined here, I guess. So it made an error. If we do this make again, now it will not get an error anymore. I think it went well. So let's check out this Litecoin. Yeah, we have a Litecoin QT here. Double click it, error opening blockchain. Do you want to rebuild the database now? Okay, so we did compile our Litecoin wallet and it is connecting to the network. As you see here, catching up, we have a working wallet from Litecoin. I hope that this video was a little bit informational for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at the source code of Bitcoin, of a blockchain. I hope you learned something new today. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you want to know something more about this subject, just let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. Yeah, if you're new to my channel, it would be awesome if you would subscribe to my channel cause I make these videos every once in a while. And I hope you did enjoy yourself while watching this video. And as always, Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.